Good afternoon to you, wherever you are. It's my pleasure again to bring the Word of God to you in this our amazing series. Now we're taking uh, a little bit of time here in the book of John because I had said that a true believer in Jesus has to grow spir spiritually. And to grow spiritually, you have to study the Word of God. So we are just kind of taking a break and going through the book of John so that you can begin to have the feeling of what it means to study the Bible or go through a book of the Bible. And we are going to cover John chapter 7 today and John chapter 8. And what I'm going to try to do is to just read some of it so you can engage me and engage the pages of the word of the Bible. In John chapter 7, there was a feast of the Jewish people. And uh, Jesus' brothers were saying, hey, are you not going to go up to the feast? And he said, well, my time has not come. You go up to the feast. And Jesus make, makes a critical statement here. And it's a critical statement that affect those who are born again, who believe in Jesus. This is what he says. He says, therefore, Jesus told them, the right time for me has not yet come. For you, any time is right. Now, here comes the statement. The world cannot hate you. But it hates me because I testify that what is it does is evil. The world cannot hate you. But it hates me because I testify that what the world is doing is evil. And if you stand against the evil of this world, the world is going to hate you. The world is going to persecute you. The word of God is going to bring you persecution. But like we said, persecution is a promotion for the believer at all times. So Jesus tells them, yes, I'm not going to go. They're not going to see me because they hate me. And then as we proceed here, I'm going to go straight and discuss the following. The source or the origin of Jesus' teaching. This is very critical for you. Because if I come to you as I'm preaching now, and I'm not preaching the word of God, then I am a false teacher. Then I'm somebody else. And if somebody comes to you and is preaching, no matter how fancy what he's saying is good, if he is not preaching the word of God, he's a false teacher, he's a false pastor, he's a false apostle, he's a false prophet. So we pick up, in, in John 7 verse 14. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple court and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having studied? Yes, Jesus was not a seminarian, but he knew God. He studied the word of God. He studied the scriptures. And that's why he preached with power. But the theologians, even as today, they stand up, they have to quote A, they have to quote B, they have to quote C, and they never really arrive at the point where you can say, okay, this is what I have understood from your message today. I hope that as I come to you, you see that I speak with power and I speak the word of God. So here's Jesus' response to them. Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. Listen, my teaching is not my own. If Jesus disclaims that his teaching is not his own, who can come to you and speak into your life not speaking the word of God? Contemplate on that. And then he goes ahead and said, it comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. If anyone chooses to do God's will. And I challenge you. To look through the things I'm saying to you. And search the scriptures. Whether these things be true. And as Jesus struggles with these people. They despise him. And we're beginning to see what I call. Religious blindness. Religious blindness. Jesus speaks to them, and then they accuse him, and they say that what? That he has a demon. They say that he has a demon. But Jesus says this to them. 
He invites them. And I'm inviting you. Verses 37 to 38, he says, On the last day, that greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within them. Because when you believe, the Holy Spirit comes into you. That's what the verse 39 says. This he meant the Spirit whom those who believe in him were later to receive. That's what makes the difference in your life. That's what makes the difference in my life. But the Jewish people continued in unbelief. And they sent people to go and arrest Jesus. They will do that today. Because they don't want to hear the true word of God. Now let's skip over to chapter 8. In chapter 8, a woman is caught in adultery. They bring her to Jesus. And Jesus does not condemn her. No, no does Jesus condemn you now. Grace is still available. No matter how sinful you are. No matter how wicked you are. No matter how much adultery you are in, whether or not you have been divorced a million times, if that's possible, maybe, Jesus is still inviting you to come. And then here Jesus would say, beginning from verse 12, that I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever comes to me or whoever follows me will never, will never walk in darkness but would have the light of life this is very crucial people and i want you to understand this in john chapter 1 verse 4 we said this of jesus or the scripture says this of jesus in him was life and the life was the light of men verse 5 says but this light is shining in a dark place and the darkness has not understood it are you still living in darkness or you have seen the light of life who is Jesus? In John 3 beginning from verse 18 to 21, we are told that whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. If you have rejected this message, you are condemned already. You have condemned yourself because God is sending you the invitation, but you are rejecting. It goes ahead in verse 19 to say that what, this is the condemnation. Listen, this is your condemnation. That light has come into the world. That Jesus, who is light, has come into the world. But you don't want Jesus because your deeds are evil. And you don't want to come out to light. You want to walk in the darkness so that you can continue to do your wickedness as you want. But then, if you continue in wickedness, then you're condemned. Now I'm going to there's a discussion here between the Jewish people and religious leaders and Jesus. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to read the discourse. And I want you to pay attention. And I'm going to title this section, Whose Child Are You? Or Whose Father Are You? Is your father God or is your father the devil? You cannot have both at the same time as your father. If this message I'm saying to you does not make sense to you, you are a child of the devil. I'm sorry about that. Beginning from verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, to you who have believed Jesus, Jesus says this, If you hold to my teaching, if you hold to the word of God, you are really my followers, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Truth. In this world now, propaganda, where all media, literally 100% of all media is propaganda. Where even education, information is propaganda. Who speaks the truth today? You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Truth is the true freedom. Then answered, uh, um, they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and we have never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? So understand. Who are they slaves to? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So if you're living in sin, you're living in slavery. You don't know truth. 
you don't know freedom. Irrespective of whether you live in America and claim that this is the freest country in the world or you live in the West and it's called the free world, if you are walking in sin, if you are living in sin, you don't know freedom. You don't know truth and you don't and you are a slave, a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but it, the son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If Jesus sets you free, you will be free indeed. You know, I laughed in 2003 when the United States uh, invaded Iraq and called it Operation Freedom, which was actually Operation Slavery. And the President of the United States made a very blasphemous statement. He said, freedom is not only uh, uh, America's gift to the world, it's God's, uh, God's uh, gift too. The nonsense you call freedom in this world has nothing to do with Jesus or the truth. True freedom comes from knowing the truth, who is Jesus Christ. So let's go down to verse 42. The, 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 the discussion continues and they say, no, 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 we are not slaves. We are the children of Abraham. And, and Jesus is like, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do what Abraham did, which is to do the truth, which is Jesus. They say, they say we are not illegitimate children. They, they, continue, they protested. The only father we have is God. These religious people, like many of you today, are claiming that God is your father, but you are living in sin. Therefore, you are a slave. You don't know the truth. You are a slave if you are living in sin. You don't know truth and you don't know freedom. That's why I am inviting you. Jesus says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You will be free indeed. So Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. I am not speaking to you on my own. I am speaking to you the word of God, just as a sent one from God. Why is my message not clear to you? Because you are not able to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. If the gospel doesn't make sense to you, you belong to your father, the devil. God is not your father. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any one of you prove me of sin? If I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? Why don't you believe this word? This is truth from the word of God. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So he says, he who belongs to God, hears what God says. If you belong to God, this message will make sense to you. If you don't belong to God, this message will not make sense to you. You can know whether you're a child of God or whether God is your father or you're a child of the devil or the devil is your father depending on how you respond to the word of God. He who belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear me is that you do not belong to God. Please, let that not be you. That's why I'm bringing you this message. Let that not be you. Don't be one who doesn't belong to God because you can't make sense out of this Bible or out of the word I'm teaching to you. Now listen to the response from the people. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? Really? The Son of God is teaching the word of God? And you accuse him, religious people, of being demon-possessed? What kind of thing is that? You get the point? Do you get the point? And then Jesus answered by challenging them about his deity. I tell you the truth. Jesus answered, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus is the great I am. God in human flesh. For this reason, he was killed. 
who is your father? God or the devil? Are you living in darkness or you're living in the light? Do you know the truth? You will know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. And he says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Thank you for your time and uh, see you next time.